So I made a video a while back about this ceramic tint from Walmart. And overall, I was really impressed with the heat rejection until I pulled it outside and then it was just super hazy. And I had gotten a lot of comments from people saying I didn't let it dry enough, uh, I used the wrong soap, I, it was the heat gun that caused the problem. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at this one, but we're also gonna compare it to their regular tint because I believe the regular tint is gonna be a lot clearer and look a lot better than the actual more expensive ceramic version. So we're gonna learn a little bit what makes these two films different. And to add a little bit of a twist to this comparison, we're gonna do it with some milk. Okay, so first we're gonna open this up and check it out. Obviously the most important thing is gonna be, what does it even look like? Unroll it. Huh, actually it looks pretty good. It's pretty neutral. It doesn't have a very strong offensive color at all. You can see some like rippling here. So I would be a little concerned that that might show up in the final installation, but I think it'll smooth out and be okay. But yeah, overall this is a nice 20% tint. It doesn't look bad at all. So now we're gonna crack open the ceramic again. I'm not expecting the color to be anything bad either on something like this. Yeah, this stuff doesn't look weird. It doesn't really feel that weird. Maybe like a little bit rubbery, which is very normal for a ceramic film like this. So the biggest advantage with something like this is it's obviously gonna block out a lot of heat. So we're gonna put it back on the, the heat lamp. We're gonna compare it to the regular stuff first and see what kind of numbers we're gonna get. Okay, this is my heat lamp demo. Uh, I have a 250 watt IR bulb that I kick on and it turns on to a BTU meter. So basically the higher number that you have, the more heat uh, that's hitting this sensor right now. So I like to use this to show the differences between just a regular film, a carbon film, and a ceramic film as that number starts to drop down, you're getting a better and better film. So let me just unroll a piece here. Now there's no glass here. There's nothing to do with an air gap as far as numbers are concerned. When I drop this film in between here, we should see some type of a difference. So this is their standard stuff. It went from 300 to 215, so that is a change. So the heat and the, the percentage is actually blocking some of that heat. I can't feel a huge difference, but I can definitely feel somewhat of a difference. Since that was a higher number, I'm assuming that this is gonna be the ceramic film. So again, I'm gonna drop this in front. And now look, that is all the way down to 30. So if I put my hand in front of here, I can feel a little bit of heat coming off of it, but very, very little. That's gonna be the main difference between both of them. Okay, so we're gonna crack this puppy open. This is the actual Black Magic kit here. This is nothing but an empty spray bottle. Fill applicator bottle with water one inch from the top, pour contents of concentrated tint on solution packets into the 16 ounce application bottle. Shake well before use. So basically what they're telling me to do was take one of these packets, put it in this bottle right here, and then that should be exactly what you need. Okay, so we're gonna fill this with pure water up to near the top, about one inch. So I've never had window tint solution ever mess with the film. It just makes it slide more or not. So it's not really surprising here, but we're gonna, we're gonna be fair. We're gonna put it down about an inch from the top. Perfect. Now we're gonna take our solution we're gonna put it all in there. There you go. You should have a perfect application bottle right now. As they said, shake well, boom, we're ready to go. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is a 50-50 split. That way we have a nice comparison between one window and, or one side of the window. So we're gonna put ceramic on this side and then we're gonna put the regular Blackmagic film on the other side. So we're basically just gonna overlap both those pieces and then splice them together to look like one pretty Walmart window. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna be using the uh, cheaper Blackmagic film. This film feels a lot more like tissue paper where the ceramic has more of a rubbery feel. Something that I've noticed with carbon and ceramic films, especially like early versions of them. Generally meant uh, not great things, but doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. It was just this stuff always felt a little bit more tissue papery and the other film felt more rubbery. Oh, something I've never had to do is literally try and pick up two pieces of film, 
the same time, just to roll down the window. Pick that up. So we're just gonna cut this whole top edge together. Might be a little tricky getting through the next part. There we go. Boom, awesome. Just an interesting comparison between the two, just with working with them. I've noticed that the ceramic one is just a lot more curly, so it tends to roll up a lot like a poster. It makes it a little bit more difficult to cut, where the standard stuff, it has like a slight curl to it, but it's gonna lay a lot flatter, and you don't have to fight with it quite as much when you're trying to install it. So now we're on the inside, because that's where the film has to go. So we're just gonna clean this up really quick. We're gonna squeegee it off. Spraying an application solution on the film, all it's gonna do is help me slide this into place. There is really not much magic with an application solution. It just literally, see how it slides on the window? If you just use water, it's gonna stick immediately. So you can spray it with soapy water or the official black magic stuff. Squeegee it down, just get it kind of where you need it to go. And then we gotta tuck this into the bottom. This is a little weird for me because we're literally doing half. Just sneak that into the seal. Use that little sharp edge on the squeegee. Get that pulled back. Squeegee up the rest of our film. Okay, so this is where things are gonna get a little bit weird. We have 2% milk, which Missed opportunity, we got it from Kroger, not Walmart, so maybe maybe this would be better with Walmart milk instead. <laughs> but in order for this to work, I think it's still gotta be soapy milk. So we're gonna take the actual baby shampoo that we would use with most window tent insulations. And then we're gonna drop it in here. This is, this is, a, this is a good idea. Give that a good coating. This is the haziest window that I definitely have ever seen. So we're gonna butt this edge right against the other one. And because we cut them together, we have a nice uh, match seam there. Just so we can have as fair of a comparison as we possibly can. Actually slides pretty good. Maybe we're all gonna start using milk. I did put a fair amount of soap in it though too, so. Uh... Now this bottom part, this is gonna be, you know what I can do? Watch this, we're going wireless. <laughs> it gives you enough to spray. So we're gonna tuck that into our seal there. Pop that back. Cause if we're gonna tin it, we're gonna tin it right. Sick. Let's get some glass cleaner. My hands are getting sticky. All right, so we're just getting these cleaned up and both of them surprisingly turned out really good. The milk didn't actually seem to leave any real residue right now, at least none that I can, you know, maybe it'll get worse as it dries out. Um, and same thing for this. I wouldn't expect to see any haze until I pull it outside into the sunlight. That's really where you're gonna see something like that with a bad carbon or ceramic film. But in here, there, you know, there's definitely a strong color difference between the two. Um, let's close this door. Take a look on the outside. Both of them look like nice tinted windows. And surprisingly, we were able to uh, use milk for that one. So like I said, we're gonna let them sit here for a week and, uh, and we'll come back to it in the sunlight. Okay, so it's been a week and remember, we tinted this window in milk. And honestly, just at first glance, I'm not seeing any downsides to doing that other than, you know, milk on the interior, but it doesn't look bad. And then this was the ceramic one. Under this lighting, I don't really notice a huge difference between the two. There's, this one seems a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and open up the door. Take a look at the inside. I mean, with the contrast between the two, I can definitely see a little bit more natural haze and slight purpleness to the ceramic versus the dyed that it just looks like tint to me. It doesn't look hazy. It's got, you know, a little bit of a funny color to it, but and by and large, it's, it's totally fine. So no weirdness from the milk, surprisingly. I don't see mold. I don't see any problems. It looked like it all dried out clear. So that's cool. So now let's pull this outside and see what it looks like in the sunlight. 
All right, so we're gonna pull this outside now and you're gonna be able to see exactly what a regular tent versus a ceramic tent is gonna look like on the cheap end. So it looks pretty normal and then you get into that direct sunlight there. What a difference, man. Look at that haze. Look at the contrast between the two. That's huge. This is so much hazier and that's just easy to see out of. And we remember we tinted the left side with milk, milk tint, but the ceramic still looks like milk. Okay, so even on the outside, what's really surprising to me is this just doesn't look as black. I didn't think there would be as much of a difference from one side to the other. I thought it would essentially be the same and one would just look a little bit more hazy. But the ceramic even looks hazy on the outside where versus a cheap film tinted with milk, again, looks much better. So it's not really about the solution that you're using. It's really about the type of film that you're installing and even milk finds itself to dry clear. Go figure. All right, so to be clear, I'm not a blind hater of Walmart films. This film just is not great. It's very hazy um, and I followed the instructions. You know, we used the kit, we used everything. We didn't even put heat on the window and we followed the instructions to a T. This is what it just turned out like. So if your results are better, I'm happy for you. Uh, but I would heavily recommend just the cheaper version instead. It looks better. Um, you can actually see through it out in the sunlight and uh, you know, it costs less too, so that's always a bonus, right? So I don't know how long it's gonna last, but hey, for 10 bucks, who really cares? The worst that can happen is you're just, you know, your own labor and removing it down the road. But yeah, just because you have a ceramic film doesn't mean that it's better. You need to get the right type of ceramic film versus a dyed film, which can generally be cheap. But with cheaper films, what we'll often see is they tend to fail quicker. So, you know, no, what you're spending your money on before you go and spend your money on it. And uh, that about sums it up. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.